Hello doll friends, this is Michael Canadas with the Grovian Doll Museum and Carmel Doll Shop. Today we have another program in our ongoing Jules Nicholas Steiner extravaganza. Uh, today we're going to just do a mini program on a subject matter that is really important in the evolution of the French Bebe, in the evolution of the Steiner Company, the eyes. So we're going to start by having a look at the earliest known type of Steiner eyes. And these are the cobalt blue eyes. Now it is believed that these eyes were imported from England to France. They were imported from England to, to France and also from um, England to Germany. Uh, England had a very good um, glass-making industry for eyes. Um, so th these are believed to be the earliest Steiner eyes. You will find these on the Toffling babies, also known as the Machman babies, the Biscuit babies, and the Gigators. So go back to our Grovian page, uh, Grovian uh, Facebook page, and you can see various examples. They were also used, we think of Steiner dolls today as strictly bisque dolls, but they did make unbreakable bebés, which were really known, we would know them as paper machés or composition dolls. So here we have a former toffling that has had some very rough treatment and lost her uh, wax coating in her body. But here you can really see the cobalt eyes. Now, um, they did use some sleep eyes in the Gigator, but not, as far as I know, the, the, the Toffling. So this is, if you're looking at a Steiner that's early, these would be the earliest eyes. And when I say the early period, I would say before the Franco-Prussian War, because after the Franco-Prussian War, Steiner started to create his own eyes. Uh, not depending on uh, foreign, foreign products. So the next eye we're going to look at, I'm going to move these out of the way so that we have the center stage. The next eye we're going to look at is the paperweight. So this would be a paperweight eye that would have been made in the, the Steiner factory. It's just a classic paperweight eye. Um, one thing that differentiates um, Steiner eyes from other, other companies is there's a lot of pale colors, pale blue, uh, pale brown, uh, amber colors. Uh, so this is what you'd find uh, in, you know, a typical, this is a, 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 a Series A. Now, something that comes out pretty regularly are the um, cuts in the side of the bisque and people don't understand, she doesn't have them, but she could have them. And the cut is when there's a different type of eye. All French makers, doll makers, improvements are not what we would think of, beautiful faces, closed mouth, paperweight eyes. Improvements in the 19th century was movement, something that made your doll move, whether it was the articulated body, or eyes. So we're going to now look at the major change. Oh, and I should tell you before we go, we didn't kill any dolls to do this, but here's a pair of Steiner eyes that have come out of a broken doll. If we receive a collection with broken dolls or one breaks, instead of, you know, uh, it's, it is very upsetting when it happens, but it also creates a study uh, a study piece. Uh, a lot of the times when we have a great doll that's broken into a million pieces, we'll save the pieces and send them to doll artists so they learn how to paint, say, brew, brew lips or brew eyelashes or eyebrows. It's very helpful. But here are classic eyes in the original plaster. And then here's what they would look like. I'm sorry, that one made my gloves dirty. Um, that's what they would look like if they weren't in the plaster. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is the really, really 
triumphant eye concept of Jules Nicholas Steiner. And if you will notice that the eyeballs close, that she's in closed mode right now, it matches the bisque perfectly. Many German dolls, um, you will see that they were waxed eyeballs and they'll be worn out or uh, dirty. But the reason hers are so special, I'll show you in a minute, but I want you to see the engineering that created that. It's actually a very simple mechanism, but I mean, if we were in 1880, this would be an incredible feature to be able to have your doll go to sleep, wake up, take a nap. It's really pretty amazing. And it's just a very simple feature. But what I have to show you here is really some of our specimens that I think are just great. So here's what those eyeballs look like when they're not in the head. So here's what's so amazing. This is porcelain. This is all porcelain. This is glaze, it's pinked. It's all blushed in the pink, the same tone as the dolls. And then this is left white. So that is the white of the eye. And then when they made the paperweight eye, and that is a paperweight eye, it had to fit into that groove. Now, there should be no mistake who made these eyes. So they're fully marked. So these were made when, when bisque heads were fired, these pieces were fired. Now, this is a fairly, if you can see, compared to her, that would be just about her size, maybe a little bit bigger. And this is a big doll. I think this is like 28 inches tall. But look at this. Here's another set that are tiny. Get that, that, you can see it. Tiny, tiny little things. So the lever-eyed, and that's what these are called, the lever-eyed went into very large dolls and very small dolls. Now there is no time difference between a paperweight and a lever-eyed. The lever-eyed would be the more expensive doll. Now I believe today the preference for collectors today is to have the paperweight, but in actuality, when they were new, the lever eye was the more uh, desirable doll. But this is part of, for a long, long period of time, uh, Steiner was the only one doing these sleep eyes. It would take the Jumeau company almost at the end of their run to even consider doing um, these eyes. Now, one more thing. I mean, we've covered the eyes pretty good. I wanna go back to this doll, and I think we've shown her before, but we haven't talked about, and this is a, maybe we haven't talked about, there. this is a figure B. And I think what is really another thing that to look for in these dolls that is so magnificent when you make dolls, making a closed mouth doll, say a Steiner or a Brew or Jumeau, a closed mouth doll, that's easy. Making an open mouth doll is very difficult because you have to hand cut out the mouth opening. So this was again one of Steiner's early pieces that he did open mouths way, way, way before anyone else. But anyways, look at those beautiful eyes and look how they look even from the side. To, to get a paperweight to um, work open and close and not rub on the, the upper eyelid is really a miracle. So I hope you enjoy this um, um, another installment of our Steiner series. Uh, follow us on Facebook. Uh, subscribe to us on uh, YouTube. Bye-bye, doll friends.